Uh, I think it follows movement. Uh, this green is super yellow, by the way. Oh, oh that's my fault. I've got flux. I've got flux. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I tried to avoid a blue light. There we go. David Chansky. Oh, there, there goes the mic's better. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that's not normal. Are you guys, you the are you guys are welcome to send me a sign to her. You need her pad? Yeah. Uh, you can add people that no, are. No, you're okay. I don't know what I don't know what spray names. Whatever we call them. Chat names. Do your best. There we go. <laughs> Everything here is best effort. <laughs> All right. So does anybody not know what data portability is? Can anybody tell me what it is? That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> <Crap back. laughs> so can anybody guess? It depends on who you ask. Yeah. yeah. OK, that's a good point. So what would some people say? Who's typing on me? I gave you my data. I want it back. I want to move it somewhere else. Yes. I don't like you anymore. Yes. <laughs> I don't oh. trust you. And yes. I don't want to do business with you anymore. Yes. But I don't want you to keep my stuff. Exactly. Very well said. And by the way, I do work for Google, but I'm used to people in this community kind of hating on my company. So <laughs> we were uh, kind of an awkward fit at the My Data conference. Okay. They were very welcoming of us. Uh, it was kind of funny. Um, I wasn't, just for the record, I wasn't. You weren't talking about us specifically. You were talking about Facebook. No, I was not talking about Facebook. Yes. I'm not cool with them, but I wasn't talking about anybody. OK. <laughs> cool. Um, so uh, the team that I work on at Google is called the Data Liberation Front. And we've been working on data portability since 2007. Um, in 2008 or 10 or something like that, before I joined the team, we launched a product called Takeout, which I mentioned earlier, which provides a uh, backup for uh, you know, an e easy to obtain backup of all your user data at Google. So we basically fetch all of your data from the various services you use, like Gmail and Drive. And we compile all of your data into an archive, like a zip or a tar, what have you. Um, our next project after that was actually we supported, in addition to download, we supported export to cloud storage providers, uh, starting with Dropbox. And also, uh, we supported OneDrive uh, by Microsoft and some others. And our latest project that we're working on is direct service to service transfer. Mm -hmm. um, so what that means is not just to um, a, a archive, but into a competing or alternative service in a, a usable. Or something different to take this is the team behind Takeout, but we're actually working on this in collaboration. <laughs> with others. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, and I'll get to who's behind the project. Um, but yeah, basically the goal is to provide um, direct service to service transfer. So your data, be it your photos or your emails, from one online service provider to another where it can immediately be used. Um, so that effort is called the Data Transfer Project. Um, this is a talk that we gave at the My Data Conference. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about the project and also what other people's portability needs are. So we've thought about this a lot, having worked on takeout, but we want to make the solution work for everyone um, and we welcome ideas. So we want to gather um, input from people. Um, OK, so first, we'll talk about the use cases that we've thought about. Um, then I want to talk about what use cases you have. Um, then intro to the project, and I'll try to do a live demo. And as, as disclosure, I've also been uh, working on from Mozilla's side uh, with the data transfer project folks. Yes. And, uh, so that's uh, I'll let you all talk. I'm just mostly going to listen to. Cool. Because I've already been on the call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, so. Do you guys still need yeah. recording of all of this, or? Um, no, we have the that camera is on YouTube recording, so that's I think going to be good enough. I don't. And it's recording uh, everything on uh, Greg's laptop <coughs> too, right? Since it's on his screen. Yes, your screen is on YouTube. <coughs> cool. uh, I well, just checked my email and signed in. Just FYI. <laughs> All right. You might want to change your password after today. <laughs> Um, so these are some of the cases that we've thought about. So just to go through them, um, say, and, oh, and also for the purpose of this talk, we'll focus on photos being the data type example. So we'll give uh, talk about uh, photos. Um, so let's say you use some photo service, be it Facebook or Instagram or whatever, um, and you discover a new service and you would like to import your photos directly to that service. So there. As you probably are aware, there's a lot of um, kind of one-off tools already out there for this. Um, 
but whenever you want to integrate any two services, you usually have to make kind of a manual integration. So that's something that we would like to avoid. Um, another example um, that David kind of mentioned um, was you want to stop using a service, you don't trust them anymore, you, for whatever other reason, maybe you don't agree with their latest terms of service or whatever, um, you would like to stop using a service, um, but not lose your data with them. Um, and finally, um, it's kind of just a utility within the same service, you just want to transfer files between two drives, for example, maybe a personal one and a shared one. Um, but it's kind of uh, tedious or burdensome to download and have and then re-upload. You would prefer a direct transfer from uh, drive A to drive B. Um, so those are the examples um, that we've thought of. So I'd like to hear what um, you all have thought of, if, if you have other data portability um, examples. It's always, it's after the fact. I want to think pre-fact, too, mm -hmm. in publishing from my website to all of these services. All mm -hmm. of these services. So that's... Portability, I, I don't want it to be just after you already have my data. I want to think about like the, mm -hmm. the micro pub solutions of, or some working solution of I can start from my owning it yes. and share it out, which is getting harder and harder and impossible, and they're just not allowing that anymore. I mean, that's maybe that's not portability, but in my mind, like, it doesn't have to close the other way. Yeah. yeah. And I think that there's a lot of benefit to thinking of that as a like top level support use case because it's not that I don't want to use tools like Instagram or Google mm -hmm. is that I don't want that to be the only place my data is. Yeah. And like I'm happy to use these things as aggregators or distribution or of whatever content functionality or they provide. Right. Analysis. Yeah. Like Google right. image recognition. Right. 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 Like right. All my photos, but right. I don't want to store all store my photos. Google, right. 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 So I want a way to have it be able to easily get a copy of stuff right. from my own place where right. it actually right. lives. Okay. But okay. Or my, the perfect one is like I love, and people have started building these on their own websites. Like the, these days, of, like those that I get, and like some of my happiest moments are like on the phone. And I'm just like, oh, that's what I was doing six years ago. Like that's a really mm -hmm. uplifting thing when I get yeah. pictures back, of, like watching like from seven years ago. Unless years it's like ago. your ex. Yeah, I that's well, that's, <laughs> that, that's a different issue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think like I would love to be able to just get those automatically. That's like uh, just because they're, they're really cool. I have no way of like getting them off of my phone into anywhere else. For sure. So I have a view on this that I, I think I will describe as a lot of there are a lot of websites today that are useful and they always pretty much always they bundle together the service that they provide with kind of the data storage that they also take on. Mm -hmm. And something I would love to be able to do is to like be the data storage provider myself, like have the photos be on my server, like mm -hmm. I own the data, mm -hmm. but then still use your service. It's just that instead of like the photos being on your servers, they'd be accessing my server instead. Mm -hmm. So what the service they, what if they could were be on decoupled. Both? Sorry? What if they were on both? Uh, that's a detail, but like primarily what I care is like dissociate the service from the data storage. So the themes I think I'm hearing are that you would like a copy. You or you would like to not, not just copy, have, you would like to be the owner. I would yes. like to have you the like canonical to be the owner. Storage. Yes, right. So but can you would still like to leverage photo, these services. Then it's kind of gone. Like. Yeah. And also paraphrasing what, what you said, if I have this right, is that it would be helpful to know um, before using a service that you'll be able to get your data back. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I meant okay. I mean, like all of these use cases means they already have my data. And yeah. I'm getting it out. I want to think about data portability and when I'm giving you the data from where I publish it somewhere else first. Mm -hmm. um, not just export, but I guess oh, okay. Import okay. Import. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I publish a photo on my website. Right. I can also send it to Google Photos. Right, right, right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and to extend that, send it to Google Photos and have Google Photos treat that as a copy, mm -hmm. not the original. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. for, for it to actually internalize that that wasn't a transfer, mm -hmm. that that was just a, a cache. So people would like to have their own, maintain their own ownership of their photos or, or whatever else. And whenever they update their own copy, have it export out to whatever service they like to Google use. Google just started yeah. talking about this week. Um, wasn't there some sort of announcement about attribution of photos? So I did not know about it. No, there was yeah. some sort of post. Yeah, there was a new um, just thing that just came out today. Yeah. Oh, the Pix tag. Cool. Um, kind of a corollary to that is um, for people who want to own their photos but use services on top, are you comfortable with the Googles and whatever other companies also having a copy because the way that it works now is they kind of have to in order to process yeah, it. Because yeah, a lot of people want to decentralize it and not even like have provide encrypted access or whatever. I mean, there are, they're like there are certain yeah. 
times when I don't want, like, I, this is why I don't use Google Photos as yeah. a photo source, because I don't yeah. want everything to be in Google. Yeah, yeah. But, like, there's a lot of things that I would love Google to have a copy of. Okay. For many reasons. Right, right. And it's more about, like, it's the ability to choose. It's yeah, about, yeah, you know, yeah. selective about it. Yeah. Cool. Options, that. Okay. Very cool. Anybody else have portability solutions we haven't already discussed, or portability use cases? I mean, so we talked about import export. Mm -hmm. You mentioned sync. Yes, right? uh, which mm -hmm. they already talked about. Yeah. And and I think the, the ownership one is even like one level further than sync. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which which is like almost like a micro pub micro sub model. Yeah. Where the user's own server or wherever the user chooses. Right. Is their like micro pub server. And then the like Google app, yeah, it acts as the client. Yeah, 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 exactly. Even if it's going server to server, yeah, it's kind uh, of using yeah. that to access it. And yeah, that that makes sense. Do you happen to know? Does does Google or other big tech services do they support MicroPub or Microsoft? I don't actually know. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. As far as I know. Okay. Yeah. There are a ton of apps now. I think Aaron. I was showing a list earlier. I guess anything with an open API you probably could implement. But and we, and there's a ton of apps yeah, yeah. that support it, both the standard MicroPub, and uh -huh. then there's a there's a couple of uh, proxies okay. that that will basically proxy MicroPub requests to an app's, I mean, a site's proprietary API. Okay. So that like you don't have to have the like n by n, like every app has to write to every proprietary API problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll talk more about the technology or the architecture behind that. The, and, um, for us, at least. My other issue is then I also want to choose my licensing. Um, uh -huh. Like, I don't understand how I can put a Creative Commons license and buy a say on YouTube, but YouTube's term, which means anybody's allowed to remix it, but YouTube's terms of service says you can't download this. So how I'm basically violating my own license when I select a YouTube Creative Commons license, mm -hmm. because I'm breaking the terms of service if I honor the license. <laughs> So I, I would love to be able to select different, like how Flickr will let me choose yeah. my the license. Your license. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Cool. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So the sync thing is interesting. Up until now, we've been focused more on like the bulk import and export yeah. case, but the that's sync a, seems like it would definitely complement it well. And the reason I called out the publishing separately from sync yeah. is that sync typically implies that there's like a sync process that has to run every once in a while. Okay. Whereas the, the actual delegation case mm -hmm. is completely on demand based. Mm -hmm. Like there is no background process. Mm -hmm. when, it, when you open the Google app, it goes and accesses your storage. Mm -hmm. and when you close it, it's done. Mm -hmm. Like there's no need to like actually synchronize copies anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. Because it's literally requesting it when it needs it. Right. It's only once something has been uploaded. Would you then publish right. it? Right. There's yeah. a direct connection to a user action. Right, right. As opposed to like in the background, like it's gonna sync all your address books across services. Or right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, different. yeah, yeah. So yeah, should I should say pub sub and not necessarily sync. Or those are two different yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even in, yeah, I've been calling it delegation. Delegation. Just as a rather than sync. Okay. To try and just syndication. 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 That's that's the yeah. word that we typically use. Well that syndication is like only half. So, that's yeah, it's a special case. That's why it's okay. like delegating like the storage essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So brief overview of the project. Um, so it was formed in 2017, um, and so we started initially focusing on the big companies. We're also working with the smaller players, um, but our philosophy behind this is if we get the big companies to adopt this, that will give the movement momentum, and we'll kind of advance this whole notion that you should be able to get your data out of the big companies in an interoperable way. Um, so we, we have partnered successfully with um, Microsoft, Twitter, and Facebook, um, and we're also working with some smaller players as well. Um, and the objective I already mentioned was kind of to connect um, any two online service providers um, for, again, this direct user-initiated tr data transfer between any two services. Um, and then the features, this gets a bit more technical, uh, but the project is open source. And it is meant for service providers to use, Microsoft being a service provider, or Google, or Facebook, or whichever service uh, you provide, that we, we call it a service provider. Um, and then we also support several data models. Um, photos is the one that we'll talk about here. Um, and then this notion of API adapters is very important to our, our approach. Um, basically what that means is if you are a service provider and you'd like to integrate with our project, all you have to integrate is yourself. So we use um, interoperable 
um, data format so that you don't have to integrate with every single other service individually. Um, so if you're Instagram, you would write a photos adapter that would convert between your proprietary format and a common format, and then everyone else likely or likewise would um, convert between the common format as well. Well, and probably vice versa if they want to intake stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If so I right. Your literature. It doesn't have to be the actual vendor who writes the adapter. And right. The third party or let's say some random person off the street could just say, I want an adapter for that service. Exactly. You could go ahead and write it. You're the random it. person off the street. <laughs> yeah. You could go ahead and write it and contribute it to the project. As long as there's an, a public API, you could integrate whatever mm -hmm. service you want. Um, and then kind of where our expertise at Google comes in, since we worked on takeout, is the scaling and kind of the infrastructure and the task management. So that's kind of, we provide the framework, um, but we would love to really grow the ecosystem where um, they have a lot of services integrate with, with us. Um, and then privacy and security, we designed it to be very, you know, um, privacy and security aware. Um, and it's also Docker based, so you can run it anywhere. And we have um, several deployment uh, options already available. Um, so in our literature, we use the term product vertical to refer to the type of data. Um, yeah. uh, let's see, some sample integrations we already have functional. Um, for photos, we've got Twitter, Google. Uh, Facebook is almost, they've got a pull request out, actually. Um, it's funny, when we made this presentation, we were like not allowed to name Flickr <laughs> for the conference, but Flickr oh, is one of them. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so several others are out there. So it's like when Mug was buying them? Or? It, no, it was after yeah. Smug Mug was buying them, but I think we just like didn't get the proper approvals and time or whatever. Hmm. It's funny. Should um, we keep it off the wiki? Uh, no, it's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, and Smug so Mug the, itself is mentioned. Right? Smug Mug, right. The example we actually show, we actually implemented Flickr and Smug Mug in case Flickr turned down their API. We wanted to be prepared to also do Smug Mug because <laughs> <laughs> Smug Mug bought Flickr. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we have both implemented currently. Neat. Um, yeah, and the demo that I will attempt to give, if it works, is um, a photos transfer, and then show how to run it yourself, and also the prototype we're building at Google. Yeah. Um, so here is our click-through screenshot prototype of what we were building that is not working yet. Um, so we have built in data transfer project um, into the Google dashboard. Um, so basically, if you were to click, um, so Google Dashboard is, if you're not familiar, it's um, off of the My Account page, mm -hmm. and that shows kind of a summary of, uh, or a snapshot of all the data you have in your Google account. Um, so if you were to expand that Photos one, oh, and, and this is not currently in production, you can't try it yet, um, <laughs> but we're adding that transfer data button, and if you were to click on that, oh, these are totally out of order. Uh, well, okay, so you would see kind of two OAuth screens pop up one by one. The first one is um, asking you to authorize the project to access your Google Photos for export. And then the next one would be asking Flickr, uh, sorry, yeah, for you to authorize the data transfer project to access your Flickr Photos for import. Did I say that right? Yeah. Um, so I will try to run this myself. Um, so I have our thing running here already. All right, so I've got, this is um, our demo Docker image. Um, you can download it from Docker Hub or you can compile it yourself. We have some documentation on our GitHub, which I'll link to later. Um, but yep, it's just pulling there, waiting for a job to come in. Um, and here I am at localhost. So our demo image has both a front end and a back end um, all combined in one. Um, so first I'm going to choose my data type. So I'll choose photos. And then, oh, let me also first show you the photos I'm going to transfer. So these are some cat photos in my Google account. And then here is my Flickr account, which should be empty. So I'm going to attempt to transfer from Google to Flickr. Sweet. Um, so I'm going to go with photos, and then from Google to Flickr. Authenticate. Nice. Oh, wow. Success. Yeah. Sorry. 
Second Second success. 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 All right, start transfer. I think that did actually click. Okay. So now we can kind of see what's going oh. on. Stuff. Stop. 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 <laughs> shutting down all my little services uh, to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I made one a long time ago that did this for Instagram to Flickr. Mm. Okay. Like, like a, a one-off, like a manual. Yeah, yeah, It was yeah. called Flickstagram. Okay. Um, it was like Very the first nice. time it was yeah. Instagram uh, yeah. had some sort of like privacy thing in the news. Yeah. Okay. Um, you should, you should and it fix... was exactly that. It was like the OAuth to yep. Instagram, OAuth yep. to Flickr, and then behind the scenes moves them all over. You should fix our Flickr and our Instagram <laughs> adapters. <laughs> It would probably suck. Uh, yeah. It, it did. So it, it did stuff. Finished copy. Okay. So we see that there. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So let's see if that actually worked. So, Ta-da! Nice. Yay! Demo. <laughs> so that, it worked. That was the adapters. Uh, so like this Google Photos thing doesn't know about Flickr. Right. It's normalizing to some sort of common to a common photo format. Concept. Yes. So we have common data formats, which we wrote like super hacky basic ones to start, um, but we're looking to use something like micro formats or some, something mm. more advanced and like, you know, out there already for that. Yeah. Do you run into a situation where for some data types, maybe photos, maybe some of the other ones, uh, you might have like a loss of information. It'll be a lossy process where there's some metadata that doesn't get yeah. transferred over. Yeah, that's a good question. There's no way to guarantee it'll be perfect. It's kind of up to the um, integrators to update both their adapters and the common data formats mm -hmm. to account for any new metadata that comes along. Yeah. And then is it copying a, any kind of link or reference to where the picture has been brought in from? Our framework does not do that, but I think if you wanted to do that in your adapter, say for Flickr, you could certainly support that. And then right now it's saying that these are added September 28th, so it's not copying the original, like. Yeah, OS yeah, it might be in there somewhere, just not in that UI. Um, this view in Flickr is sorted by the date taken. Yeah, so, I wonder if I can get some kind of metadata on here. Uh, Flickr has two dates: date taken and date uploaded. Yeah. Okay, so can and I? Do you know so how to get date taken? Uh, that little drop down uh, in the middle of the screen under camera roll, it's a sort by. Oh, okay. Um, so. But so it looks like it's set. The, it's set it's the date for both of yeah. them. Yeah, but that's something you could easily. What change. was the original yeah. photos? Uh, date um, taken. Might be also. Yeah. No, 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 it was not today. No. Okay. So that looks like a. Bug yeah, but yeah, theoretically you could, could put in whatever metadata you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Flickr does support setting both dates on, in the API, so it, like it's mm. possible to fix it. Yeah. I suppose like there might be, I could definitely see that a service that just doesn't have the so, concept of backdating stuff. Right, but, right. So in that case, you you want to incorporate that into the common each, model, and not every each service, service has to implement that themselves. Um, each service has to implement conversion between their model and the common model. And the common model, it's is it public? Is it it's public, and we put something totally hacky in there just to start. Uh, we're not sure what kind of models we want to yeah. use, but a lot of people like like microformats and schema.org and others are already working on this problem, so we're collaborating with with, with others on that. And is, it, yeah. is the common format a community project or is it a Google project? A community. So yeah, it's open source. And so, who, who yeah. is being maintained by? Yeah, so Google. it is. Um, so we're still pretty early stage, and we're trying to work on our like governance model. Um, we have a group of maintainers that I think you can like request an invite to. Certainly, the Slack and the forum is all completely open, though. So. And where is it currently? Uh, yeah, I'll get to that. Uh, I have links. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can get that. Yep, there we go. So, okay, ignore that first thing. That was from the conference. We were at. Um, that's our website, and we also have a white paper, um, GitHub, forum, and Slack. What's the volume so, GitHub, Slack? Uh, it's actually pretty low. Oh. It's pretty low volume. We would like there to be more volume. No. <laughs> <laughs> because I have to stop reading the GitHub stuff. It was a little too. Big. Yeah, no, the Slack is more sane. Okay. Yeah. So the code yeah, is on GitHub. GitHub. It's on GitHub. Yeah, oh. it's under the Google repo for now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was, yeah, I think that was it. Any, yeah. Yeah, any questions, comments, thoughts on data portability? Um, how are you, so are you pulling in comment 
data? Is that included? Oh, in that's, see, that was a big yeah. issue. Oh. Hmm. Man, that's I, a big problem. I did that with, in my Instagram reporter. I basically yeah. took all the comments from Instagram and put them in the description on Flickr. Okay. the best I could do. Oh, there was no okay. API to yeah. like impersonate comments on yeah. Flickr. Yeah. Right? But okay. I just dumped it all into the description field, which was awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. Then I got to keep all that history. You got a history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably not as rich of a history as, as you'd like, right? right. But, or a structure. It's, it's, it's not structured. So does that sound like that yeah. at all right now? I, you know, I'm actually not sure. I feel like I've heard people talk about this, but I'm not sure. But it certainly could be. Um, Again, it goes. Yeah. I think it, it comes down to what is Flickr going to support on yeah. the import model, mm -hmm. and how right. would they handle things like accounts that don't exist in Flickr because the account was from something else. Yeah. Not yeah. Right. We could certainly add it, it to our. It also need to be in the schema that. We yeah. We could certainly add it to our common model. Um, but I'm not sure which APIs are going to support it, and if mm -hmm. there's much commonality. So what's in the it. common what's in the common model currently? Uh, I can pull it up actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually do not know for photos. Uh, well, Comments and responses have a, have both the technical challenge that you just touched on, but perhaps even stickier is the ownership challenge. Yeah. Instagram has gone uh, the way of uh, favoring like being conservative in it, so. Even when you download your own Instagram data, none of the other users' data comes along with that. So you don't but see any old com anyone's comments on your photos? No. But no, but is that a is that a GDPR compliance issue? Because yeah. they're not. Why should they, Why are you getting the it, it is a comments? it is a question of who owns the Com comment, and Instagram has decided that the person who wrote the comment owns it. Well, then, do you when you get an export get your comments? You do. But okay. you don't get the photo that it was a comment on because it's not your photo. You yes. get a bunch you of get untethered comments. comments. You don't even Context. get, you get a, it's, it's actually pretty bad. You don't even put get a URL to the photo. You should be able to get a URL. It's just an ID. It's is, just an oh, ID. Yeah. I see. Yeah, so, there were, uh, they should have at least done a little better on that. Yeah, but Buddy they, brought up in the, the chat, Bridgie, um, because the, like, the, touching on exactly this issue about backfeeding comments and, and other responses, likes and whatever, um, from all kinds of silos. And, oh, yep, Ryan's in here. Yeah, he is. Oh. He definitely wishes that Data Transfer Project did comments for Backbeat. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, he, he runs a service called Bridgie, which okay. does, exa or does exactly this for the services that it can. So if you have a post on your site that's also on Twitter, it will Bridgie will watch your Twitter post for new likes and responses. Oh, cool. And feed those back to your site as a web mention. Okay. It used to do this for Facebook. But okay. Facebook's API changes close that down. So. Close lots oh. of stuff down. It yeah. Oh, yeah, down. after, yeah. That's why I don't, I don't see Facebook. That's why I yeah. just don't believe that they're going to let this happen, because they don't, like, they've been so they just mean. Broke, no, they're, they're, they're so many But they're working with us. They are working with us. Their engineering team is. Yeah, no, no, I, I said that, but I didn't really yeah. mean that yeah. they weren't working on it. Yes. All I meant was the, the engineers are super excited, but the company is too, and they're like they've got full requests out, and they're actually meeting with us and stuff. And uh, if you're yeah. if you're in the IndieWeb uh, chat right now, Ryan also linked to a section like we've tried to collect some thoughts about backfeed for comments and uh -huh. responses uh, on the wiki. Mm -hmm. So on the backfeed page, there's a section about storage, legal data ownership, okay, etc. That has um, it looks like mostly brainstorming and kind of gut checks. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but definitely like file GitHub issues if you want support for that in the project, and I'll bring it up with my team if we're not already talking about it. If yeah. there's not one about comments already, and yeah. just responses in general, like likes and favorites. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Plus yeah. ones. Yeah, and we also probably don't want to like. So I, I pulled up the photos model here. It's mm -hmm. really basic. This is not meant to be the final solution okay. for this. Um, so yeah, we we don't want to do too much of this work ourselves because people are already doing it. So we would like to use one of the solutions already out there. Uh, I don't know if such a thing exists for photo comments or not. Though. Are you working at all with any uh, archiving institutions on this project, like archive.org or any? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, not know? currently, but I can bring that up because there's people to talk to. Because talk they've to been. Let me, uh, comments. Comments. Um, comments. 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 Okay. comments. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if anyone's knowledgeable about saving stuff. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Kind of yeah, and right, right. 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 And making it, you know, accessible. Yeah. And working on making standards-based, uh, you know, yeah. uh, ways of holding that. Yeah. So I just realized a good test of this will be to like take data from, for example, Google and port yeah. it into Flickr and then back into Google and see how much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Then that actually kind of brings up a point. Um, we want 
the ecosystem to be friendly and people not to just be doing import. We want anybody yeah. who does import to also provide export. And we were actually thinking of building in some kind of reciprocity test. Uh, we use the term reciprocity. Mm -hmm. mean like, you know, whatever you send out, you also get back, and it's, it yeah. should be full, uh, what's the word, uh, fidelity. Yeah. And that makes for a better product. Like, if I'm choosing where to put my photos, I would choose a place where I could more easily export stuff. Mm -hmm. For sure. Oh, um, Ryan also brings up, uh, if Facebook allows functionality in the data transfer project that will not be in its API, won't developers just use that to get around <laughs> this? That they, wait, will they? So if, if like through data transfer project, I could have like my service get at your, some amount of your data in your oh. Facebook that wouldn't be able, that I wouldn't be able to access by making say a Facebook app. No yeah. I think we'll expect yeah. to see an explosion of people that are like, I've made an adapter that plugs yeah. your Facebook into this that's kind of just like a manually triggered API. Yeah, that's interesting. So the, the project is designed right now to only use public APIs, but mm -hmm. Facebook is looking into running their own instance. And so they could do kind of whatever they want. They don't have to use a public API for their export oh, side. Oh, dang. Yeah. He also brings up, or just posting. So if you uh, if you can use the data transfer project to get stuff into Facebook, now yeah. you have an API to post to Facebook, which they just closed down. Yep. So uh, <laughs> similarly, like, is there a way to post to yeah. Google Plus now using DTP? Oh, yeah. Fun. So only if there's a public API. But but for, for, for but that's something that for our Google instance, if there wasn't a public API, we could do. But we're trying to drive like we would like everybody to have open APIs because we think it's better for everyone. So like, could I initiate from my website an import of a single post into Google Plus? So right now we only support like transfer all the stuff. But we would like to do individual. Well, how do you know posts. it's all the stuff? I'm just giving you an I'm just giving you an import, right? Like, uh, when you say transfer all the stuff. Right. Yeah. Right now, just because we're it's coming not, from like the bulk world. So it's it, pulling. It, it just fetches push. everything or imports everything. Right now, that's just our prototype. Right now. Okay. Just we'll do like your entire account. But like, let's say we you would make, like to select. Let's say you make yeah. an account on Instagram. You put only one photo. Yeah. Sure. And then you'd like. Delete that account and make a new account, put just one photo, and then yeah, then it would work. It would work. Yeah. Now you have an API to post into Google Plus. Yeah. That API. Well, I mean, but I mean, but our project, like, you're not gonna like, it's just, it's only gonna use whatever API there is. Like, it's not gonna. Well, what if I write a custom? Yeah. But what if I write my own service? Right. Yeah. Well, to flip yeah. to flip this the other way, and I think to get to yeah, know, hopefully, at what you're saying is like. Through the data transfer project, yes. maybe <laughs> maybe we will encourage them to create public APIs. Yes, exactly. So that we can all get this functionality yes. back. Yeah, yeah. And, and within be... our team at Google, we've been like pushing other teams to improve their public APIs. Yeah. So the I think danger that's a, of using a... that's a good hammer to hit them. Yeah. Because like it's right. hard from an IndieWeb perspective to be like, but Facebook, why? Yeah. They have their own reasons and don't listen to individuals. Yeah. And I don't know if data transfer project is a big enough hammer, but it's a good. I know. Hammer. I know that they. They say, and they're committing resources to working with us on this, and yeah. they're working on making their public API public again to use with this project. Does the reciprocity uh, apply in both directions? Uh, we we want it to. So we want kind of like the malicious case we're trying to prevent is that somebody would just want to suck up all your data and not give it back. Okay. So we're, we're trying to say that if you provide import, you should also provide export. So I'm, I'm, that's why I'm asking the opposite. If you provide export, yeah, you should also provide import. That's true, but I don't think we see anybody who would only want to provide export. Google Plus. Yeah, I guess that's true, right? Because it's it's kind of yeah. like, you know, if you want to export your data, like, shouldn't you be able to import it, import it to use the service? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, we'd only really thought of it from like the evil suck up your data point of view, but that's true that you want to give it too. And this oh, is kind of just like. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> or, or I was going to say, it's part of the, when we go back 10 years ago, the difference between me uploading my contact database to Twitter versus Google or Facebook, and there was a huge inequality of who's taking data in which direction and why. And of course, you know, Facebook said, well, we're not going to play nicely with Twitter or other services to give away your, you know, get your contact database that you already own. But we're going to force them to, you know, do the processing on their own to be able to recreate your own social graph, which was a, a huge issue, you know, a decade ago, and obviously is even worse now. 
Yeah, I know social graph is something we're working on and that Facebook is interested in doing, but it does get to like, there are some privacy concerns with that because if you're kind of exporting your social graph, that also is dependent on other people's connections as well. And do they necessarily want that to be public? So what is the current thinking so, on that? At very like early stages, we're not sure yet, but they, we want to work on it. We want to do it in a way that is comprehensive, but also respects people's privacy. And we don't know what the answer is. Oh, dang. Am I falling down on the job? No. We still have five minutes. <laughs> Eight minutes. Seven minutes. Math. <laughs> Math. Seven minutes. <laughs> Better estimate with every second. <laughs> Maybe. So people here actually want to use Google Plus? That's all you <laughs> we want to use, we any, we want to use the one service that will allow it. Well, make Google Plus the indie web service. Okay. And then every, you know, they make that the, the friendly one. Make my that the. We'll find hilarious yeah. that people want to import into Google Plus. Yeah, I mean, there are still communities out there that yeah. that that is where they happen to. The education okay. community, okay. teachers. Okay. That is, it's a big. Teachers are still, because they can turn that on in their. Um, in their G Suite, like you can enable it. I think they took that out, but you used to be able to, like, yeah, like it that was wasn't an included core things. service, but mm -hmm. districts could add it. And a lot of teachers kind of gravitated to that as a professional learning network. So. Mm -hmm. Or in an indie web setting, it would be nice to be able to plug in to 57 services I've used over the last decade, sure. suck all of my data out, and use it to populate a WordPress site or a Drupal site or, you know, Grab or Perch or any of these self-made things and then I literally truly own all my data mm -hmm. in 10 minutes of work yeah that would be a hell of a demo mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah David's gonna do it for us <laughs> <laughs> you just got ball and told I saw it no no but it's a huge term in the military. <laughs> no, I use that term at work all the time. Yeah, you're at work too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm told. The yeah. student work here, and I was <laughs> over at Stony Brook, yeah. and that's like a huge thing. Never like gonna like gonna say, that. Voluntold, yeah. It's funny. I don't like that word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it's not supposed to feel good. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why I was like, I've never heard anyone out there in the military use it. Yeah, I've never heard it yet. I don't remember where I first heard it, but yeah. I think it's really great that you're doing this work. Though. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Really, it, I feel like I don't have much to contribute other than design. We need designers. Well, yeah. Make design. us a UI. <laughs> Help us with UI. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> the um, what is it called? The depicts Wiki, the Wiki, Wiki Commons is building a really interesting project right now. Yeah. On depicting data. So like when you have images, for uh -huh. example, and let's say you took a picture in an art museum of yourself. And then you have two famous paintings behind you. Uh -huh. How do you tag all of these things? And so oh. right now there's like a whole um, project at, like around that kind of attribution that's coming oh, up cool. that might be related, but and don't do that in Europe. Right, right. So like there's all these rules around article whatever that they yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can't take a picture of the Eiffel Tower anymore. Like, in front of the night and... stop you. Yeah. <laughs> that's in the new copyright right? code, right? Isn't it? 100 oh, like the whole before. that was before. And that's going they, they they just expanded it. To my understanding. No, the no copyright, the European copyright law is horrible. It is like the most it just unfriendly web thing like in the world. Almost anything. Yeah. And there was like a building, the architect or whoever like owns the copyright on it, so you can't Whoa. actually take a picture of yourself in front of it. Yeah. It's insane. And that's what just for the Eiffel Tower or all of Europe? All of Europe. So like a the photo U I U have of me in front of the Berliner Dome is copyright infringement. Wow. But maybe not because you're American. <laughs> or maybe, right, maybe they don't have jurisdiction. Maybe it'll incentivize yeah. people to just go take photos in front of trees. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird? Talk about From like 50 years in off. the picture, it's like everyone stopped having architecture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Europe just quit. Everyone moved to the woods. <laughs> it's the only place we see pictures of people anymore. <laughs> Caves? Yeah, right. Some great sci fi. Uh, no caves are property. Dang. No, but they're so, not designed. But 
Something. About a creative work. By God. like a Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Yeah. That would probably be the hardest Black Mirror episode to do, but like truly the most impactful is like, I what is the IP episode of Black Mirror and just these like weird cases of. Yeah. This is so insane. It's so hard to reason about until it's like you, you got the cease and desist order, and now you're like, what? Right. <laughs> Great. Uh, we got three more minutes. Coming up next <laughs> is a break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. But wait, there's more. That's right. Uh, yeah, coming up next is a break. And then at 4 o'clock in here, we'll be Learn to Build a website. Uh, hey, and yeah, we moved it in oh, here because okay. uh, we had some remote folks. And there's so many people that want to do The it. easiest remote. Uh, and then in the Design Factory, the room way on the other side, will be Readers. Um, which all I have here is the hashtag. I forgot <laughs> what that was about. It's like feed readers. And, and Aaron's social readers, things like that. Yeah. Um, Consuming. I'm going to tell you. Great, thank you. All right. Cool. You found, you found the actual cell work? When I looked on Amazon, it was gone. Uh, I was looking at, not on Amazon, I was looking at the original. Yeah, thanks for well, Ella joining us through Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's good stuff. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you. It's great thank stuff. You. Yeah. Oh, thanks for participating. And if you're only like small things like photos. Oh, I got it for a trip. We want like anything and everything. Yeah. Large companies and so they do the big data and stuff like that. Work very well. Yeah, and we anything could theoretically be supported. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if people know this. Are you in touch with the education? I'm powerful with USB power. It is USB power. Yeah, but I ran out of ports and computers. Yeah. So it's really the learning, like, this particular lab definitely has to be a small place. I didn't bring right, because right. they can control the comments. They don't have yeah, to worry yeah. about it. Interesting. The, okay. the, the, the lack of safety. Well, for power yeah. So yeah, Google Plus right. for teachers is a way safer place because they get to moderate everything. Yeah. So it became kind of like well, a um, kind of refuge for the Right, right. Because nobody's Airport on Google Plus. Yeah. So yeah. 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 We yeah. like it because no one's there. Yeah, that's so funny. But it can get power directly off. I'll want to present for that. So we had to make it up. Yeah. So and here's the other thing. This is probably one of the longest running. Uh, I hope so. I it is it's working for that. Yeah. 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 It depends on the power of your actual battery. I'm going to take one minute and I'm going to get myself a snack. I was just about to say, I think I'm going to head out because I. Yeah. I'm not totally awake, but <laughs> there's more coffee. We want you soda. Um, soda's probably gone. It's just because of my four a.m. Nope, still on. Wake up. Oh um, yeah. Alarm. Are you in a different oh, time zone? Really? No, it's a baby. No, I have a, a nine-month-old who. Oh. Yeah. Pee. Pee. Poo. That's a different time zone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. I'm like never on time. <laughs> um, but if you know, anyone wanted to contact me or anything, I'm gonna try to. You know, continue this work on like my last 2016. Jess, and let's set you up if you want to call me because you're not coming tomorrow, right? Right. Yeah. So if you want to call me, I think your best solution for I want to start blogging right now, right away, is the is just doing microblog, and we'll set that up on a subdomain of I, I just just kind that is just kind that is slash writing slash writing. Mm. So it's just yeah. And we'll set, and you can, we can map it right to that. Make it a subdomain, it would be Yoda speak. What? It would be writing.jessclein.is. <laughs> I know, but Yoda, I am. <laughs> yeah. So, I know so we can, you can call me and I can walk you through that process if you want. Shouldn't you be able to go with that? Day two, are we back in here again? Uh, day two will probably mostly just be in the main area. Uh, it's same free work, so we'll have a, a session where everyone talks about what projects they would like to work on. If there's overlap, that's great, and then you can kind of pod off into different areas. I think we have all of these rooms okay. again tomorrow, so we can use those just as breakouts. Also, you have By the way, since you're room, like going to the with Daft Punk music uh, and another quiet space. Mm -hmm. I know. I would like to come in. Contact. Well, you and Dave are going to start running the HWC at NYC. So. Yes. Well, oh, awesome. <laughs> well, I'm also, I run the um, open source design meetups in New York. Oh, nice. Which, Dave, you need to get back. You need more designers. So you, go hang you out should come there. join. Well, yeah, I, I should say come join us. But like. Yes, that's right. So you were you were asking for design. So yeah, join us. No, yeah, I'd love to have be... somebody who actually had an aesthetic sense. Yeah. No, I'd love to be <laughs> active in here. Like. Please just email me and bug me, and I will respond eventually. Awesome. Greg, help Greg knows how to bug me. <laughs> it does take a lot of bugging and then a good period of